Hey, welcome to the next in our series through the fruit of the Spirit. I've been saying that the reason that we're doing this particular series is because the fruit of the Spirit uh, is a list of Christian characteristics that is so important, it doesn't really get a lot of attention. And part of the reason that it doesn't get uh, a lot of airtime is because, well, the characteristics in the list are just not that particularly exciting. Uh, for example, patience, self-control. However, when it comes to today's fruit, I think it's something that almost everybody, especially today, is searching for. So today we're talking about peace. And in particular at this time when there's such a heightened sense of worry and fear, everybody's looking for peace. However, I think the peace that they're looking for is based on somewhat of a misconception. I think today when people think about peace, what they have in mind is this sort of tranquil existence that comes about through the absence of conflict or, or suffering around us. And I've been trying to say through this series with some of the other fruit, other fruit like for example love, that love doesn't exist in the absence of its negative partner, which is hurt. In fact, we said that to be loving means you're going to hurt. Love exists not in the absence of hurt, but despite hurt. Yesterday, Justin did a fantastic job talking about joy and saying again, joy does not exist in the absence of sorrow. Joy exists despite sorrow. And I think it's really important that as we continue with the series that, that we get this right. That when we're talking about these fruit of the Spirit, we're not talking about a continuum here. Uh, what I mean is, we're not, it's not some sort of scale where, where on the one hand you've got, you've got love and you've got hurt. And so if there's a lot of hurt, then there's going to be a little bit of love. Or that if, if there's a lot of sorrow, well then there's not going to be joy. And so if there's a lot of conflict, then there's not going to be peace. That's not how the fruit of the Spirit are described uh, at all. Love, joy, peace do not exist in the absence of their negative partners, but despite the presence of their negative partners. I mean, let's just remember, peace is a fruit of the Spirit inside us. It is not a product of circumstances outside of us. And so these things come deep from within us. And so the, the, the word for peace even just describes something far bigger than an absence of conflict. So in the New Testament, the word for peace is the word Irene. So that's quite easy to remember if you know the little town of Irene outside Centurion. We cycle through there quite often. It's this really, yeah, a kind of idyllic uh, little town. But Irene means uh, literally inner quietness and rest despite circumstances. That's the definition in the Bible of this word peace, which means it's, it's something that exists despite what's going on around us. Now listen, uh, that's the same for the Old Testament word peace, which is a really big word. Well, it's, it's a short word, short word, but big meaning. It's the word, I'm sure you know it, shalom, which means kind of this idea of wholeness or state of well-being in relationship to something. This real idea of being complete, of being whole, of what something that was once broken now being restored and all the pieces back together and this idea of completeness of existence and it's interesting that it mentions the word in relationship to something because mostly peace is in relationship to something uh, and the primary relationship of peace is well our relationship to God and that's why we'll read in Romans 5 verse 1 it says therefore since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. See, there's the relational side of peace. But here, peace with God through Jesus. Now, I have to say, at the, at the risk of con perhaps confusing things a little bit, I have to say, that when it comes to peace with God through Christ, well, actually, here, we are talking about the absence of hostility or the absence of conflict. And you can see this in Colossians chapter 1. Verse 19 says, For in him, in him Jesus, in Jesus, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, to restore, to bring back together, to mend, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood 
of the cross. And it says, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled. See, it is exactly speaking about the fact that there was hostility between us and God. I mean, there was hostility from our side. We were hostile in mind, Colossians says. We rebelled, and that incurred judgment and hostility from God. But Jesus has absorbed that. That's what we looked at on Sunday. And now there exists peace between us and God. But again, it's not just the absence of hostility, it's the restoration, it's a complete a state of existence or wholeness with God. Now here's the thing, when there's wholeness with God, when we're at peace and restored in our relationship with God, well then we can experience this settled completeness in life despite circumstances going kind of crazy around us. So you surprised that yet once again, of these fruits of the Spirit comes down to Jesus and to pursuing Jesus and being grateful for Jesus and what he's done for us. That really, truly will lead to peace. Hey, we're going to talk about this a little more tomorrow. We're going to dig more into that next time. Uh, so I hope to see you there. But hey, before you uh, check out, just remember today we have another kids activity for you. So scroll down in the blog post and read our kids activity. See you next time.